Another topic that I like to uh, touch is Canada's role in the world, especially under the new uh, Prime Minister like yes. uh, Justin uh, uh, Trudeau. Uh, what do you think of Canada's role? Uh, you are neighbor to United States, yes. and um, what do you think? What, what would be the Canada's role in this changing world? I, I think the, um, the our new government has a very um, has very clear ideas about what it how it wants Canada to be um, to act in the world and be perceived in the world and. One of the major uh, initiatives of the new government, our new government, is that it wants to re-engage or engage in a much deeper way with the United Nations system. Um, it, it's a firm believer in multilateralism, and Canada, you know, Canada's um, very well known for its emphasis on the United Nations and multilateralism and peaceful globalism. Uh, our role in founding uh, peacekeeping, UN peacekeepers, uh, and our activities in in um, peacekeeping around the world, um, and also our very active participation in all types of UN activities. And um, this current government w really wants to step that up, to re sort of regain Canada's place as a, as a, a player in the multilateral system. So um, in fact, in, it's uh, just a nomenclature issue, but we renamed our ministry. We're no longer Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development. We're now Global Affairs Canada. Because our, the, the Prime Minister and this government really have a view of Canada's uh, role as uh, global and a, uh, a view of the key challenges facing humanity as not small issues between, let's say, Canada and Myanmar, but they're global issues. Climate change, maybe um, uh, in intolerance or accommodation of differences, uh, things like that. So uh, there, we're, we're very... We're very intent to play a positive role, a kind of uh, convening, peacekeeping, facilitating role, and to be much more active globally. Yeah. My last question would be, unless you want to add uh, something more uh, to our readers and audience, uh, would be, you have, during your this stay um, um, for more than two to three years here in the country, what were the kind of... Uh, events or moments that are that have been important to you mm -hmm. so far and uh, i'm sure uh, you witnessed and observed uh, the november elections you you've so, got exactly so you've got it right. are doing uh, things that have been important for you so actually i've been um, i covered uh, burma from 2003 to 2007 when i was the head of the political section in bangkok yeah. so i visited very frequently over that four-year period so actually my my um, experience in Myanmar is over a period of about 13 years so I've seen tremendous changes from 2013 to today and I don't really see the pace of change slowing down so uh, I think there's many more and bigger days to come in the future I'm sure but um, if I was going to pick one day I would have to say it was election day mm -hmm. and um, our embassy so just to focus on this one issue we have a very small embassy but uh, we, we fielded seven teams of election observers. And what does that mean? That means that absolutely everybody in our embassy, except for one person who had to stay behind mm -hmm. and manage the embassy, was an election observer. Mm -hmm. We also had uh, a colleague of mine from Bangkok came, and our uh, desk officer from Ottawa came. So there were uh, 14 of us, and we split into teams, two-person teams, and uh, we we did an observation in the uh, uh, Irwadi Delta, in Bago, in um, uh, Mon State, and Cayenne State, and Yangon, of course. And among those seven teams, I believe we visited some 50 polling stations and also uh, viewed, the, viewed the vote counting in the polling stations. Um, my day was very special because I, I, started, I went the day before to Bogale. And Bogale is a, uh, I have a great affection for the town of Bogale because I, in addition to being here as a, a diplomat when I was posted in Bangkok and now, I was also here after Nargis. Yeah. I, uh, I worked on a, a study of uh, civil society response after Nargis. Um, and the area where I focused was Bogale. And so I was very happy to go back to Bogale now and see, uh, you know, the, the tremendous recovery that's taken place between Nargis and, and now. So um, to get to election day, uh, like many people, I woke up at, I don't know, 
four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. It was very dark. Uh, I'm not a morning person. I don't like getting up at <laughs> five o'clock in the morning. But when my alarm got off, I was very excited. You know, it was like a exciting day. So I uh, jumped out of bed and um, went to um, went to a restaurant to get something to eat. The monks were all leaving the temples. It was a very beautiful, serene atmosphere. Um, you know, chanting. Still, still very dark, but the city, um, the city coming to life. And um, I, I had my breakfast in a leisurely way because I thought the polls don't start till six. I have lots of time. And I was so surprised when I got over to the polling station at maybe 10 to 6, t- line up, lots and lots of people. And the polling station was a hive of activity. I was so impressed with the organization of the polling station because there were all of these stories, oh, it's a, the, the election's going to be a disaster, the voter lists are terrible, and things are disorganized. As you know, the polling stations were all run by you know, women maybe in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and it was, everything was very, very well organized, like a military operation, you know, shouting orders here and there. And um, uh, it was kind of like, it was exciting, like it was the day of a big championship football game or something like that, or maybe, maybe more like, a, you know, the day you get married, because it's very exciting, but you're a little bit frightened <laughs> that something could go very wrong. So that, there, was that, there was that kind of fear and excitement at the same time. And then, you know, the polling started, and maybe after about an hour and it started to get light and the, the city was even more lively, you could feel in a town, a small town like that, the mood started to change. You know, I got, you got a feeling that people were thinking their nervousness was evaporating, you know, like the morning dew into this, under the sun. And people were starting to become more and more, you see more and more smiles, less worry. And, um, and by about maybe 10, 11 o'clock, I noticed a lot of people, people are all taking selfies and chatting and, oh, come over here and take a foreigner, foreigner, come over here and take a picture. And the, the mood started to become kind of more happy. Then I drove back to Yangon to, to uh, visit some poles here. Uh, I finished the day in the, uh, the area around the embassy, which, as you know, is a very interesting, uh, around uh, Sulepea Sulip- is a very interesting multicultural area. And um, I went to a very physically small pole in a, in a shop front, and it was absolutely packed with people. And everybody had their, um, their cell phone out, taking pictures, taking videos. Again, a very, very exciting atmosphere. It was kind of like we were watching, a, you know, watching some sort of sports event. That you could feel the excitement as the names were being read out. And... I think by the end of the day, you know, everybody had this feeling of a great feeling of not only relief, but uh, achievement as well, that, you know, um, that this was really a landmark. And, you know, not just for the party that won, although it was a tremendous victory for the, for the NLD, I think it's also a victory for the, um, for the reform process, that, um, that this election had been carried out with a, a great deal of... Um, uh, know, um, high degree of organization and um, very few, relative, relatively few problems. Although, you know, we know there were problems in Rakhine State, problems on, in conflict areas, but a really amazing achievement. And the start of not just, uh, you know, it's not just like in a championship football game where, okay, now the season's over, what do we do? Mm-hmm. It's really, uh, it, you know, it's a victory for everyone, but then it's the start of a new story. So a very exciting day. One of my, I would say that's definitely the most, the most exciting day I've had here. One more last question. Yes. Sure. <laughs> you have made the embassy staff, Jan's man, to <laughs> wear, you yourself is also wearing, yes. to wear longji. Yes. Why? I, I'll give you a couple of reasons. Um, the, the, the obvious reason is that longji is much more comfortable in this climate. You know, I feel uh, I'm so happy on, we, we wear, uh, we always wear lunji on Friday and usually during the week, usually on Monday as well when we, when we have um, internal meetings. And it's much more comfortable if I have to go out in the daytime to get lunch, I'm, I'm cooler and uh, feel more, more, uh, more at ease wearing a lunji. 
I think the other thing is I, I want to show that um, it, Myanmar is going through a process of modernization, but don't lose the important things that make Myanmar Myanmar in a, in a desire to be something else. Definitely you want to be modern in the sense of good health care and good education and technology, but um, you know, the Longi is a very practical, beautiful tradition, and I think we should keep it, just like Chinlong. Mm. I'm, a great, uh, I'm a great supporter of Chinlong. I love seeing people playing Chinlong in uh, parking lots and alleys and uh, on the street. I think it's a fantastic sport. It's something that Myanmar should share with the world. Um, I'm a terrible Chinlong player, but I'm good at tying a Longi, I think. <laughs> so that's why I like to... That's why I like to wear uh, lungi and um, all of our, uh, the Canadian I I interns, for example, I've never had anybody say, oh, I don't want to wear a lungi. Once somebody wears a lungi once, you know, maybe they're nervous the first time or embarrassed, but once somebody wears one once, they don't want to go back. Is there anything you would like to add to our readers and audience? Um, the, I guess the only thing I'd like to add is uh, just to reiterate what I've said about the ca canada Myanmar relationship. You know, we're countries that are quite different in a lot of ways, but I think um, just like within a country, differences can be complementary, differences between countries can be complementary as well. And we have enough in common in terms of, as I said, um, economic uh, capacities and economic potential that, uh, that I think creates a lot of, a lot of um, potential for, um, for cooperation and collaboration. And I think as, the, as Canada and Myanmar kind of get to know each other again after a long separation i think this is going to be a very uh, a very beautiful and productive friendship thank you Hicks, thank you very much for the thank interview you.